What's happening, everybody? Hope you guys are feeling good. Welcome to my Dauntless Training, where I'm going to show you eight tips that's going to help you come from a beginner slayer all the way to an advanced behemoth bashing bastard. Now, each one of these tips, or they're going to help you from the very beginning, as soon as you start to try and use them, and as you practice and as you get better at them, they're going to be advanced or what like people like to call in-game tactics. Now this is what I like to do here, is I like to make gaming easy, er. So if this helps, join the team of killers, become a killer of teams. Now on that note, let's get to the very first tip that you need to know. Damage types. Now in the very beginning of Dauntless, you're going to get thrown into the mix, and you're going to start hacking at this behemoth, and a whole bunch of numbers are going to come up, and they're going to be different colors. Now damage is damage, you want that thing dead, that's your main objective. But, to get better armor, weapons, and a lot of the other things that Dauntless has to offer, you're going to need parts. And you literally break these parts off of the behemoth. Now when you're attacking the behemoth, you're going to see yellow numbers. That's part damage. Now once you broke that part off, whether you collected it or not, the damage will then become white, which is now base damage. Now it's a good idea to cycle around the behemoth as much as possible and try and keep getting the yellow because part damage is king. But white damage is your base damage. That's going to kill the behemoth and like I said, that's your original objective. Now the other color you're going to see is blue. That is stagger damage. That will always be half of what your base damage is. Now stagger damage is the damage that you need to knock a behemoth off his feet. You just lay him out and you and your team can run in there and pile on him. Now the red color is wound damage. Now what wound damage does is it actually opens up little wound cuts. Now the part damage or your base damage or all damage is now higher in that spot. Now the next thing you need to know or keep in mind on is attack patterns. Now I'm not saying memorize these guys the attack patterns, that's just crazy. And what we do here is making game easier and that doesn't sound easy at all. But you will notice very quickly that certain behemoths attack in certain ways. You don't have to memorize the Rockfall, Scarum, I believe that's how you say it, his attack patterns. But basically, you can't stay on the side of him. Unless, of course, you want to get run over and over and over. So, you're going to want to attack from the back and you want to attack from the front. And after fighting him constantly, you will eventually learn his attack patterns. And then we got behemoths like the Embermans. This guy is chaotic, he won't stop running around, he's hard to get close to. But you realize in a hurry that when he goes for a run, he takes at least two laps. Now, this is a perfect time for you and your team to line him up on the second lap, knock him down, then you can run over there and kick his ass. you also notice after he shoots fire, he takes a charge. This is also another great opportunity to line him up, knock him down, and then you and your team can run over there and beat him till he's dead. Now you will run into the behemoths like the Riftstalker. This guy is super chaotic. He, he's, he makes the Embermans look like a turtle. Uh, I, re I don't memorize his patterns, but there are openings in the stuff that he does that you can take advantage of, like right here. But mostly with him, you gotta be good at dodging. Which brings us to my third tip, which is dodging. Now in Dauntless, it's a little different than your normal dodging. I know Instinct would tell you to dodge away from what's about to happen, but with the Behemoths, they're big giant monsters and their attack lines are huge. It's better to dodge left or right for positioning, especially once you've started to learn their attack patterns. It's a good idea to go the way they're going to go and then you can keep on the assault. Now in Dauntless, no surprise, risk and reward is a big thing. Dodging towards the enemy, dodging through the attack, is actually the biggest invincible window. This is what they want you to do. Sounds nuts, sounds fun, but this is what they want you to do. And there are a few weapons that will actually reward you for doing that. Now, speaking about weapons, that brings me to tip number four. Try all the weapons. And I mean that solely because at first it seems like there are a weapon for everybody. But in reality, there's pretty much two weapons for each behemoth. They're weapons that excel better at their attack patterns, and once you get better at that weapon, you'll be able to take it into any battle that you want. Now, the hammers are strong and heavy. The swords are the balanced jack of all trades, but master of none. War pikes are good at chains and can shoot. 
The chain blades are chain blades are fast and you can also attack from a distance. And the axes are by far the slowest and by far the strongest weapons in the game. Now after just a little bit of playing, you unlock the guns. The guns have a whole bunch of different uh, customizations, a whole bunch of different orbs, different elements that you can tack on to them. Now, when I say elements, this brings me on to my fifth topic, the elements. And when it comes to behemoths and the weapons, you need to kind of be careful on the elements that you choose. Now, when you're going to fight a fire behemoth, it is a good idea to bring fire armor, but not a fire sword. You want to bring a ice sword or ice axe. It's easy to mix them up, but you gotta remember that if you bring a fire sword to a fire behemoth battle, it's not gonna hurt as much. If you bring a ice armor to the fire behemoth battle, he's gonna hurt you a lot. Now there are a bunch of elements to keep in mind and a few more that you will unlock while playing the game. Remember that wound weapons like the war pike are the best at inducing status effects. But when you're in your weapon or your armor upgrade or you're building them, it will show you what element it likes and doesn't like. Now on to step six, using your mods. Now these are little perks, little things to help you that will fit in all your weapons and all of your armor. When you're first making them, they'll help a little bit, but these can be all leveled up by taking them to the mix shop and you will get better ones as you advance through the game. Now, when you chain these things together, you could use ones like something that will help you have extra stagger damage to knock the behemoth over. Chained with something like something that gives you extra damage when your behemoth is staggered. Now, these go from helpful to really making the difference in the end. Which brings me to step seven. We can't forget to use our items. Now, this guy right here. He's a very useful person. You got, it's a good idea to do his missions. He will give you a ton of stuff. Most of these items are stat buffs, item related, either defense or increase your offense. Then they got these poles here that just give you health. This is fantastic. But there are other things in here like this vampire tonic. How this works is after you take it, a certain percentage of the damage that you put out gets given back to you and your team as health. So if you all have this, holy crap, it means you take a drink, go running in there screaming like a barbarian, and there's a good chance that you and your team will come out the other side with more health than when you started. Now there are a bunch of different items that can do stuff like this, turn the tide. Now this brings me to my final point, it's kind of a light one, I want to call it needs and wants, but it should be called focus. Now keep in mind there are a lot of weapons and a lot of different armor when you start playing. You really only need one fire armor for every fire behemoth. Whenever I go to fight any kind of ice armor, I carry my Burris armor. Boris armor. And that's why you'll typically find me in my rock pajamas carrying my lightning axe to every single leaf behemoth that I can find. I just really like that combo. And the game, through the missions, will send you back through fighting different behemoths at a rate that you will be able to collect the pieces that you need to make every weapon and every piece of armor, especially if you're planning on trying to finish out your mastery list. Which, by the way, is a good thing to keep your eye on. As you progress through your mastery list, you will unlock new special attacks for your weapons, new perks, a whole bunch of good stuff. And on that note, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. I really, really, really hope this has helped. I got another video coming out soon that's going to be about battle tactics. Um, we're going to talk about chaining staggers together so that you can just... There's an actual term for this, but I like to call it putting a behemoth to bed. So if you want to learn how to make him lay down, or you want to learn how to put him to death, join the team of killers, become a killer of teams. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Keep it easy. And remember... Just keep gaming.